Good morning. I'm Paula Roganis, your elder on call for this week. Our caregivers for this week are Diana Barefoot and Jeffrey Manley. Uh, if you or if you know of someone who has a need for caregiving this week, a meal, a phone call, or etc., uh, please call one of the caregivers or me, and we'll be glad to help you in whatever way we can. We want to extend a warm welcome uh, to everyone who's worshiping with us today, and especially any guests who are with us. It's an honor to be with you. We're delighted that you joined us today. Now, I'd like to refer you to the um, announcements that came out on Friday uh, on, uh, around 2, 2.52 p.m. And uh, I'm going to uh, highlight a couple of them here, but there is a, that email that went out to the congregation that you may look for more details that I'm not probably going to give at all. Uh, there will be a meeting this afternoon at two o'clock by Zoom uh, where we will uh, join in celebrations and concerns. I uh, will uh, join us even if you do not have a celebration or concern to share because it's such a great way to stay connected and to remember how much you are loved. We will send an email about noon to just to include you in the, uh, with a link for you to join us. Um, there, there is also a message in this, in this uh, uh, announcement sheet. Uh, that refers to how you can submit uh, offering to the Church of Re Reconciliation online through the mail or uh, elsewhere. So I refer you to, to this so that you can know that you can still make contributions without exposing yourself to other people necessarily or, or just uh, being safe during this time of, of uh, isolation. The Adult Education Committee is planning a Zoom study centered around the 2019 film, Just Mercy, which sh sheds light on systemic racism. While the details as to when and how to join in the study will be forthcoming, you are encouraged to take advantage of the opportunity to view this important film for free during the month of June. Warner Brothers is making the film available for free this month only on various platforms, including YouTube. Please be watching for further announcements and consider taking part in what we hope will be a meaningful and timely discussion. Another reminder, two weeks from today, Youth Sunday will be June 28th, and the worship and sermon will be led by our youth. Please join us for that at 11 o'clock in two weeks. On Wednesday afternoon last week, June 10th at 5 p.m., over 60 folks of all ages wearing masks and carrying signs gathered at the church to stand for justice and show our solidarity with the Black Lives Matter movement. A list of some of the names of Black persons who have been murdered at the hands of the police was distrib distributed so that we could say their names. Excerpts from a litany from, from the poor people's campaign were distributed for prayer props and Karen and the youth created sidewalk chalk art along the street in front of the church, writing the names and expressing their feelings about the current situation. You may send your photos from the vigil to Karen at karen at churchrec.org. She will post them and make a video to share. Some of us sat in chairs on the sidewalk. Some of us walked the block to Franklin Street to hold signs and greet those driving by. Many of the drivers welcomed our actions by sounding horns, waving, or holding a fist out of the window in solidarity. A dark cloud appeared over the area as we were gathered, but moved on without disturbing our vigil. The temperature and humidity were high, but so was the level of enthusiasm from the group. There was a feeling of true community among the vigilers and a reconciliation, a recognition of the need for us to step up our work in the struggle for justice for all. The Justice and Peace Committee extends thanks to all who participated in person who, or who supported us with prayers. 
The Church of Reconciliation invites you to participate in a, a service of national mourning against racial injustice next Friday, June 19th at 12 p.m. via Zoom. Uh, and the ID is listed as 513-066-880. The service will consist of po music, poetry, scripture reading, and prayers, and will be led by William Andrews, Professor of English Emeritus at UNC. Mary Lee Douglas, fifth generation African American Presbyterian and ordained Presbyterian clergy, and Ron Gilmer, interim pastor, Church of Reconciliation. From land and structures, mowing at the wreck. We haven't distributed the usual mowing list because we don't know who would be able to do it. But if you were willing, the grass is growing. Talk to Chris Lutz if you need pointers or just have at it. Call Chris at 929-360-8185 or email him at chris.lutz912 at gmail.com. And the land and structures thanks all who have helped with small jobs around the church campus during the stay at home period. Except for some overgrowth, the ground looked beautifully green and vibrant with birds and bees. And then, uh, in addition, I uh, just wanted to highlight that Liz Evans and Nancy Gustavson have offered uh, instructions or help with making face masks that can be dist distributed throughout the community or for yourself at home. And I wanted to say thank you to Liz and Nancy for sharing this information. Now I will ask you to please silence all phones and other electronic devices and let us worship God.
God, we are aliens and sojourners in this world, but you invite us to be your guests. You lavishly offer us your hospitality and lovingly welcome us into your family. You invite us to share in the abundance of your kingdom. God, you have shown us that providing hospitality to strangers opens a doorway into the kingdom of God. Remind us that when we offer hospitality to others, we are receiving Christ into our midst and so fulfilling the law of love. We open our hearts to embrace the stranger, the friend, the rich, and the poor. We open our lives to offer a generous heart toward all. Amen. Grace to you and peace, and in the name of Jesus Christ, welcome to the Church of Reconciliation. Today's prayer of confession will be prayed responsibly, and Karen Miller will lead this prayer after a moment of holy silence. Please join me in prayer. For the times we fail to offer hospitality to those in our world who suffer injustice, oppression, and poverty, we pray, God have mercy on us and your people. For the times we lack courage to address the causes of injustice, oppression, and poverty, we pray to our God, God have mercy on us and your people. For the times we give in to despair and resignation when confronted with the injustice of our world, we pray to God. God, have mercy on us and your people. For the times we allow our fears to triumph over the call to solidarity, we pray to our God. God, have mercy on us and your people. Merciful God, receive our petitions, heal the brokenness in our hearts and in our world caused by injustice, indifference, selfishness, and fear. Open our hearts to hear the cries of your suffering people. 
support us as we seek to respond in solidarity and with hospitality. Amen. Christ gave us his life to save us. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Trust the good news of the gospel. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Agent Karen, this is headquarters. We have a mission for you. Are you there? Do you have the wrong number? This is Karen Miller. I'm a middle-aged woman and I run a 12 minute mile. Yes, Agent Karen, we mean you. We have a time sensitive mission for you to retrieve the crown. Um, okay. On the roof is a helipad board the helicopter. On my house? Yes. Now listen. Once you are over Coney Island, New York, you will parachute to land. I'm a little scared of heights. M maybe a lot of scared of heights. Once you land, make your way to the hot dog eating contest. You will have to defeat world champ Joey Chestnut by eating 74 hot dogs and buns in 10 minutes. Next, enter the building on your left. Inside is the crown. Okay, finally. Not so fast. It is protected by an alarm. You will have to weave your way through the lasers so you don't set it off. Then retrieve the crown and return to headquarters. Easy peasy. Are you sure you have the right number? This seems impossible and I don't even know where headquarters is. Affirmative. Now exit the room as quietly as possible to begin your mission. Now that mission seemed truly impossible. And in the Bible story today, God tells a woman named Sarah that she will have a son. That doesn't seem so impossible, does it? But there's more. And do you know what Sarah did when God told her this? She laughed. It was kind of a strange reaction. But what God told Sarah was kind of like my mission. It seemed impossible. You see, Sarah was older and thought her days of having kids were over. She wanted one so badly, but it just never happened in all those years. And it was funny to think that it would happen now. She just didn't believe it was happening. But it makes us wonder, is there anything impossible to God? Here God kept his promise and Sarah did have a son. So even in things that seem impossible, God is working. Now this comes from our Old Testament scripture today. There's a part in the New Testament that I want to read for you, and it's from Romans 5, verses 3 through 4. And it says, We take pride in our problems, because we know that trouble produces endurance, 
endurance produces character, and character produces hope. So when things seem difficult or seem impossible, God's working in those times. And when we look around today at all the problems in our world, we want to work harder and fix them. And we're trying to fix ourselves and we create hope for the future. And out of darkness comes hope. Would you please pray with me? Please pray with me. God, in our troubles, help us know that you are working within us. Help us grow when things seem impossible. And all God's children say, Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination from the Diocese of Canterbury. Ever loving God, we bow before you in reverence. You search for us, care for us, and welcome us home. We belong to you. Transform us into your likeness and feed us to the, your generous word as we wait for the spirit and make us more and more signs of your hospitality so your kingdom may come on earth as in heaven. Amen. The scripture reading is from Genesis 18, verses 1 through 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance to, of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then we, we, you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way, now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three seahs of the finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to his servant, who hurried to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk and, half, and the calf that had been prepared and set these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where is your wife, Sarah? They asked him. There, in the tent, he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which is behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out, my Lord is old. Will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Will I really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you did laugh. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Halle, halle, halle.
sermon is based on the reading from Genesis that you just heard. But before we go there, hear what the Spirit says to the church in Matthew's Gospel. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned the 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12, Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go, nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons, you receive without payment, give without payment. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Promises, promises. Which of God's promises to Abraham and Sarah is the most absurd? A, that they will give life to many nations. B, that God will give their descendants all of Canaan. Or see that every family on the face of the earth will be blessed through theirs. Today's Genesis reading focuses on the first promise, the one in which God declares that Abraham and Sarah will soon give birth, even though they're almost at the top of the waiting list to move into Carol Woods. As much as I love children, the thought of bringing a baby home from the hospital at this stage of my life exhausts me, and I'm only in my 40s. No wonder Sarah laughs at the thought of being a mom at her age. Perhaps she laughs to keep from crying. The subject of this morning's sermon is laughter, which serves both as a coping mechanism and as a mirror that shows us who we are as individuals and as one nation under God. Do you think that God laughs? I do. I believe that God has a sense of humor, and I wonder what or who comes to your mind as soon as I offer up this proposition. Look no further than God's promises to Abraham and Sarah for evidence of God's sense of humor. When you think about it, Abraham and Sarah's story has all the makings of a sitcom. The timing of Sarah's pregnancy could not be more absurd. And imagine the looks on Abraham's descendants' faces when they arrive in Canaan and someone has already set up shop in the promised land. Today, I'm asking you to reflect with me on what's funny and why. And then we will set Sarah's story into conversation with overarching biblical themes like justice and hospitality. Anyone in show business, ask anyone in show business which is more difficult to produce, comedy or drama? And chances are this person will say comedy, perhaps because consumer expectations of this genre of entertainment are clearer, thus higher. When you sit down to watch a comedy, what do you think? This better be funny, right? According to Psychology Today columnist Ronald Ruggio, there are four styles of humor. Affiliative, aggressive, self-enhancing, and self-defeating. So how interested are you in the subject of humor? Do you look for it and other evidence of God's grace? 
in everyday life? Do you believe, as the title of one of former Duke chaplain Will Williman's books assumes, that the laugh shall be first? I hope that you do, because laughter enriches both faith and life. And I agree with memoirist Anne Lamott, who says that laughter is carbonated holiness. Effervescence, however it is experienced, is a kind of resurrection. What Ruggio calls affiliative humor is the most innocent form of humor at all. Nobody is offended because such humor lacks depth and weight. Think cat videos on YouTube or whatever you watch when you just want to sit on the sofa at home and drool. Aggressive humor often comes at the expense of another person or people and unfortunately is the most common form of humor in American religion and politics. Who is your favorite comedian? Who are the butts of this person's jokes? With self-enhancing humor comes an ability to laugh at oneself, especially in situations over which one has no control. Remember that time that a bird dropped a blessing on you at the beach or on a golf course? If you laugh at that experience now, that's self-enhancing humor. Self-defeating humor presents as self-loathing, but according to Ruggio, it is actually an act of self-defense. When one fears being bullied or attacked, he or she may attempt to deflect a verbal or physical assault by sacrificing his or her self-esteem on the altar of self-demeaning humor. Forgive me for doting on the obvious, but given the turbulent times in which we live, I feel that we should acknowledge that often beneath laughter lurks excruciating pain. How often do we hear stories about comedians whose laughter masks tears? Remember Freddie Prinz, who was a comedian in the 1970s? His story ends much like Robin Williams, whose antics taught at least one generation of Americans to laugh and love with good cheer. In the summer of 2017, I studied with Cliff Nesteroff, who at that time was completing the book, The Comedians, Drunks, Thieves, Scoundrels, and the History of American Comedy, that was published the following year. Nesteroff's course, like Good Comedy itself, taught me much about American culture and my place in it. For example, for the first time in my life, I thought about the extent to which comedy is generational. Quick, name a comedian whose comedy appeals to more than one or two generations. Perhaps the number is low because there are so many genres of humor. Puff Post says there are nine different ways to be funny from slapstick to wordplay to potty humor. If you're wondering who you are, think about what makes you laugh and at whose expense your laughter comes. Humor, which shows us who we are, may be politically charged too. Where would NBC Saturday Night Live and late night talk shows be without political satire? Looking back on my formative years in South Carolina, I have come to appreciate the fact that some of the first substantive conversations that I had about race came after listening to African-American comedians. R-rated stand-up routines by Richard Pryor and others were strictly forbidden, which of course only added to the allure. And yet by listening to Pryor and other African-American comedians in the bedrooms and basements of friends' homes, I started noticing injustices in the system and recognizing that behind the audience's laughter 
there was pain. And unfortunately, we as a nation are still hurting. God's promise to Abraham and Sarah in this morning's reading seems absurd, so absurd that Sarah laughs. The fulfillment of this promise then seems as far-fetched as the suggestion that justice will roll down like waters in the United States now. And yet I believe. I believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe in God's liberating love. I believe that God, who fulfills promises to Abraham and Sarah, will fulfill promises made at the Declaration of Independence. For example, all men and women are created equal. They are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If you find yourself laughing at this statement, because the possibility of justice being served seems absurd, rest assured that you are in good company. And take comfort in knowing that Abraham and Sarah eventually require the services of a babysitter. Now, let's talk about race and racism, which is not to be confused with race wasm. Is it just me or do you feel that everything you hear and say right now is racist? For example, when I am asked to call someone about participating in an event at church because he or she is black, my first thought is that's racist. Then when I make the call, I am overcome by feelings of discomfort because I fear that I am somehow reducing the person on the other end of the call to a race, to a box to be checked, or to an identity to be commodified for white privileged consumption. However, when I ask myself, what is more racist, including someone on the basis of skin color or excluding this person for the same reason, Clearly, the latter is. Still, I hope that none of us will ever say anything to anyone that comes across as, come be black over here so that we white people may feel better about benefiting from a system that is and always has been categorically racist. Structures have to change before we as a nation can live into our creed. Perhaps everything that we do and say will continue to feel racist until the system that perpetuates injustice is crucified and resurrected. Meanwhile, God calls us to be Christ's body, the church, and to be the moral conscience of a nation where poverty rates are rising as our coronavirus cases, and public demonstrations. On this Sunday in which we remember and celebrate Abraham and Sarah's laughter, I wonder how soon all of our descendants will arrive in the promised land. But we practice the hospitality that Abraham and Sarah practice in this reading. Will we welcome strangers? like the ones who show up at Abraham and Sarah's tent? Will we love one another unconditionally at first sight in celebration of our faith in Jesus Christ who first loved us? Will we ever be able to be honest enough with one another to drop all the pretension, all the facade, so that we may freely live into God's dream for us and laugh until we cry tears of joy together, both for ourselves and for coming generations. As Abraham and Sarah's faithfulness gives life to many generations, 
I pray that our legacy will be justice that flows down like water and righteousness that runs like an ever-flowing stream. To the God of all grace, who calls us to share God's eternal glory in union with Christ, be the power forever. Amen. Please text Courtney Chavez with celebrations and concerns, remembering that there will be a time for further conversation at two o'clock this afternoon. Our first celebration is the success of Wednesday's vigil as the intersection of Franklin and Elliott streets were lined with members of this faith community who proclaimed boldly that Black Lives Matter. So for, for the witness of this congregation, we give thanks and pray, God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying for Nancy Corson Carter's sister's family, for Elaine Foster, whose brother Dick Johnson of Chicago entered the church triumphant this past week, and for Joe Shofi, who lives in pain. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Ellen Davis, who reports that she safely arrived in Charlotte this week, and for Ken Jens, who came home from the hospital last Sunday afternoon. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Courtney? From Ann Lutz, we have a celebration. Sarah had a great time at her protest last week and is just fine. And Liz Evans writes blessings on the family of Dan Rose and husband Levi on the arrival of their baby Patrick. Elroy, their dog, is also delighted with this new family member. And a celebration from Bill and Sharon Andrews we celebrate Sophia's contributions to worship this morning, as do we all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now let us unite our hearts in prayer. O oh, holy source of laughter, thank you for giving us the gift. For all things harmlessly quaint, incongruous, and unexpectedly absurd, for pomposity that falls on its face, 
for children chuckling over a riddle, for lovers enjoying each other's quirks of character, for cartoonists sending up political arrogance, for explorers cracking jokes in the face of danger, for the terminally ill who laugh with their nurses, for the saints who throw laughter into the jaws of evil. For Jesus and his quirky sayings, the camel attempting to squeeze through the eye of a needle, the man with a plank in his eye who tries to shift a speck from a neighbor's eye, the woman who breaks bread for her family, the man who lights a lamp only to put it under a bed, the dead who want to bury the dead, the woman who on finding one lost coin throws a party, for the New Testament faith that can laugh because it knows nothing can cut us off from the love of Christ, neither a host of troubles nor deep distress, neither persecution nor starvation, neither nakedness, peril, nor sword, not anything in life or in death will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. O oh, holy source of laughter, thank you for giving us the gift and for the faith and hope that allows us to employ it to the full. We laugh because you first laugh on our behalf. Now we pray as Christ himself prays, sure of your mercy and love. Holy God, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us away from temptation and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now you're invited to join us in singing the hymn of the church, and as you do, we suggest that you go to gallery view so that you can see the community celebrating the faith that God has given to us. privilege to lead worship at the Church of Reconciliation this morning. I pray that God was glorified in the process. And I give thanks for the leadership of Paul Orogenes, Akiko Haywood, Karen Miller, and Courtney Chavez. Now let us share God's blessing and charge as we go our separate ways. As God's own, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, and patience forgiving one another as Christ has forgiven you. And crown all these things with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. Now to the one who is able to keep us from falling and to make us stand without shame in the presence of God's glory with rejoicing, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Amen. Um, um. Hello. Hey. Hey. <laughs>